had just arrived from Hong Kong. Our boat docked to the Long Beach Harbor. As the customs went through our bags, I realized the trip was definitely over. Her name was Jean Arnold. She was a dancer, a member of the famous Henri Felix dance team, interpreters of the modern dance. Henri Felix was the real star of the show, a rather conceited man who seemed a little impatient with me because I took up so much of Jean's time. The third member of the company was Frankie Ludwig, the wardrobe woman and General Flunky. She was an ex-wrestler, and according to her, she had held many European titles. Though I had become quite friendly with Jean Arnold, I knew the others only slightly. They very seldom came out of their staterooms, and I would see them only occasionally in the dining room. Taxi, mister? Sure. I'll be waiting up front. It was the first time I was ever hustled by a cabbie before I even stepped out on the street. I learned later that the little cabbie's name was Sam. If I'd known what Sam was going to lead me into, I might have gone back to Hong Kong. I've got a taxi outside. I should wait for Henri. They can follow. I'm going ahead with Mike. I'll meet you at the hotel. Rehearsal at 2 at the auditorium. I'll be there. See you at the hotel. Only one hour for lunch. You'll be there at 2. Bye. Wilton Hotel. Oh, no, no, Mr. Lanyard, this is not a hold-up. Excellent work, Sam. Really excellent. Thank you, Mr. Bracken. That's really a compliment coming from you. Thank you, Sam. And I mean it. I'm really proud of you. When you stop slapping each other on the back, would you tell me what this is all about? I'll come right to the point, Mr. Lanyard and Miss Arnold. We want the jewels. Uh, the jewels. Hand them over. I'll do the talking, Sam. What jewels? $100,000 worth of rough-cut rubies were purchased in Hong Kong. One of you is carrying them. One of you has been able to outwit the customs officials. Or perhaps you both are working together. Look, I don't know anything about any jewels. May I go, please? Hold up your hands, Lanyard. Search them, Sam. Nothing. Perhaps we can uh, negotiate. I'm afraid you've been following the wrong pigeon. But the only thing you can hijack from me is some greenbacks. That's your final answer? I'm afraid so. You'll regret this, Mr. Lanyard. Where'd you borrow the taxi? I'd rather not say. I understand. Leave it here. This is merely the beginning, Mr. Lanyard. You'll be hearing from us soon. If I hadn't been here, I wouldn't have believed it. Now I know why you've been so evasive about yourself. I'll manage alone. What about your luggage? We might as well take the taxi to the hotel. Well, I suppose I have no choice. You don't think I had anything to do with those jewels, do you? I really don't know what to think. Smuggling jewels is not my business. What is your business? It'd be much easier to tell you what isn't. I drove to the Wilton Hotel. I couldn't be sure myself of what was going on. The incident was too ridiculous. I tried to explain to Jean that these two men who had accused us of smuggling were complete strangers to me. I have suggested that we laugh and forget all about it. She couldn't see it. I guess she figured that because she wasn't involved, I must be. Jean, wait a minute. I can manage by myself now, thank you. The 
show ended about 11 o'clock. I hurried backstage. I wanted to see Jean Arnold again. Maybe she was holding out. Maybe she called the police to cover for herself. I didn't know any of the answers yet, but I intended to get all of them. I don't like the police on my back. What do you want? I want to talk to you. I don't think there's anything to talk about. No. I think there is. Well, let me make myself clear. I'm starting on a world tour. It's very important to me. I can't afford any bad publicity. Maybe that's why I'm here. Like you're very nice and I like you very much, but at the moment I have no intention of committing suicide. I told you, I don't smuggle jewels. That's your business. What you do, I mean. Just leave me alone. How long have you known Henri Felix? Six years. Why? If I said it was only curiosity, I'd be lying. I do not understand you. But I do not like your spending so much time with Jean. We let her decide, huh? She has decided. She asked you to leave. Please go. Maybe I'd better call the police. Somehow I get the impression I'm not welcome here. We do not want any scene, Mr. Lanyard. We do not want our pictures on the front pages. We have worked very hard. Now, this is my first trip to America. Do not embarrass us any further. Look, someone's put a noose around my neck. I'd like to take it off. I do not understand you. Let me throw him out. Stay where you are. You talk in riddles. Yeah? Okay. As far as I was concerned, it was a jigsaw puzzle, and I couldn't put the pieces together. I went back to my hotel. I'd made the first move. Now I could sit back and see if anyone would counter move. you back so soon. Well, did you enjoy the concert? Uh -huh. The concert? Oh, yes, yeah, excellent. How nice. Uh, we couldn't go. We had work to do. So I see. Did you find anything? Not a sou. Really, Mr. Lanyard, you're quite clever. Frankly, we're ready to give up. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Thanks. Oh, it's our pleasure. You don't want me to commit homicide, do you? Uh, we object to violence, if that's what you mean. I'll give you five minutes to put everything back where you found it. Yes, sir. Uh, no, no, Sam. The uh, shirts go in the top dress. That drawer. goes for you, too, Mr. Bracken. Get going. Of course, of course. Go on, get going. Lieutenant. We're, uh, we're playing games. Know any? Well, you know Mr. Bracken and Sam. We met. Yeah, nice to see you, Lieutenant. Can I get you anything? A drink or something? What are you doing? Taking inventory? Uh, no, tomorrow is laundry day. Any friends of yours? Look, Lieutenant, I asked you before and I ask you again. What do you want with me? You know Jean Arnold pretty well, don't you? So what? When did you first meet her? On the boat, coming from Hong Kong. Did you know him before then? No. How about Henri Felix? I hardly know him now. I checked. There was an important jewel robbery in Hong Kong about a month ago. The rubies were worth $100,000. A tidy sum. Where did you meet those two? We, uh... We 
she had a cab this morning. Back I can that vouch for that. Correct. I have a warrant to search your room, Lanyard. You won't find anything. He's an authority on the subject. I'm not going to search it. I just want you to know I've got a warrant. See you later. I'm proud of you, Mr. Coming Lanyard. You really Mr. Lanyard. Him That's quite a compliment. Uh, we make a, a wonderful team, the three of us. A wonderful team. been in storms. I've had a shotgun staring me down the throat, but never before had I ever been surrounded by so many madmen. If it hadn't been for diggers, I would have thought the whole thing was a gag. If Henri Felix was smuggling stolen jewels, he had a way of doing it that was unique and, so far, very effective. I decided to start with the obvious. What better place would there be to hide jewels than in the costumes the dancers wore? I headed back to the auditorium and the wardrobe room. I opened the door. To my surprise, I saw Frankie. The couch had been made up into a bed, and it was clear she was going to spend the night there. I could have sworn that I saw Frankie check into the Wilton Hotel. If she was sleeping here, it was for a purpose. I was right. Frankie did have a room at the Wilton. Maybe the wardrobe at the auditorium was the right answer. Suddenly, I heard footsteps. Bracken and Sam must have seen me after all. I didn't want to see them again. I'd seen enough of them for one day. Who is it? It's Jean. I've got to talk to you. What do you want to talk to me about? Uh, well, can't we go in your room? You know, we shouldn't be seen together. Sure. Can I get you something? I'm so mixed up, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't see why. It's been a normal day. If I could only trust you. If you could. Then what? I've been at the police station all morning. Felix was there, too, and Frankie. They asked us a million questions. Oh, how did you do? Well, they, they asked Felix if he's gotten off the ship in Hong Kong. He said, no, he hadn't left the ship. I knew he lied. He did get off in Hong Kong. Meaning what? This isn't the first time we've been questioned about bringing jewels into a country illegally. And this morning when I was in the police station, I suddenly realized that Maybe I was wrong about Felix. Does he know that you suspect him? No. What about Frankie? You think she's involved, too? I don't know. I wish I knew what to do. Does she always sleep in the wardrobe room? She has a room in the hotel. Oh. Have you any idea how the stones get into the country? No. What about that jeweled hat you wear in the finale? It's only colored glass. Mm -hmm. You have a rehearsal tomorrow afternoon, haven't you? Yes. I'll be waiting in the dining room. I want you to bring that hat to me. If the hat was covered with rubies, I'm sure they wouldn't be there now. I want to look at the stitches, to see if the stones have been replaced. What'll that prove? It'll prove how the jewels got into the country. I want to be sure. Is it really, Felix? Or someone else. You don't trust me anymore. You're right. I don't. Rehearsal's at two tomorrow. We through by three. I'll meet you then, with the hat. I won't count on you, but I'll be there.
Maybe she was telling the truth, maybe she wasn't. If she was telling me the truth, I could use her. With the police breathing down their necks and Bracken and Sam trying to cut in, they'd have to do something soon. I just wanted to be on the spot when it happened. It was 3.30. She was supposed to be here at 3. And there could have been a lot of reasons why she didn't keep the appointment. Whatever it was, I intended to find out. I headed back to the dressing rooms at the auditorium. Jean's dressing room was empty, so I decided to check the wardrobe room. The trunks and the costumes were gone. I hurried back to the hotel and talked to the clerk. He said that Henri, Jean and the others had arrived about 50 minutes before and gone up to their rooms. I went right up to Jean's room. But there was no answer. I used a skeleton key. I looked into the room. It was as empty as her dressing room. Felix had the room next door. I didn't expect to find him there. It looked as though all three of them had taken off. But I decided to double check. I'm glad I did, because he was there. Only he was dead. At the moment, finding Gene was my problem. My only hope right now was Bracken and Sam. Come to us. Well, glad to see that you finally seen the light, Mr. Langer. Thirty-three and a third. That's how we're going to split it up. Thirty-three and a third percent. Full part. Wait a minute. Where's Jean Arnold? Forget her. I know you've been tailing everybody night and day, including Jean. Did you see her leave the hotel? Yeah, but she's not important. Do you know where she went? Sure. She's not important. <laughs> Felix is our man. That's the man we got to watch. Where did she go? Forget about the girl, Mr. Lanyard. It's Felix we got to watch. Night and day. If you don't tell me where she went, I'll break every bone in your body. Really, Mr. Lanyard, you're being quite a bore. The girl's a red herring. Well, about ten minutes ago, she got into a taxi. I double-checked and discovered she'd gone to the Bay Harbor. Can she take a boat from there? Oh, she might be able to hire a private boat to take her to San Diego. But you're chasing the wrong one. Felix is our man. Felix has been murdered. <laughs> Okay, Lanyard, you win. Didn't I say 33 and a third? We'll split the reward three ways. Reward? They were stolen rubies. 
a huge reward from the insurance company for anyone who recovers the jewel. We're not hijackers. We're, we're, we're not even fences. We're private detectives. We're international, of course. Of course. I'll take that. Uh, the reward. Yeah, we trust you, Lieutenant. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Lieutenant. Is this on the level? I'm afraid it is. I just had to run down on the boat. At the top of it all, they write pulp stories on the side. What about Jean? Jean and Felix were partners. Jean decided to double cross Felix and make you the patsy. Nice girl. Oh, and we picked up that wardrobe woman, too. That wasn't easy. But she talked good and loud. talk to you, Lanyard. It's a great opportunity. Oh, some other time. I've got 20 minutes to catch a play. Oh, where are we going? But you don't understand. We're a team. This is the perfect marriage. We'd work together like peas in a pod. We're partners. Well, I'm very flattered, and I thank you. I'll call you. Don't call me. Oh, you can't leave us now. Not after we've gone to the expense of printing our new business cards. Cards? <laughs> Very nice. 